I am very excited to share a new exploit I have found in KSP. An aerodynamic exploit that enables some truly ridiculous designs. The source of this exploit is from the heat shields in KSP. Let me explain. So, the heat shields in stock KSP produce lift. I'm not entirely sure why they do. Maybe the devs put it in for stability, or just to let you do lifting body re-entries like the Apollo capsule. Can we use this lift to make a plane? As it turns out, the heat shields produce the most lift at an angle of attack of 45 degrees. So let's stick them on a plane and give it a shot. As you might see from the drag arrows, this is a terrible idea. The heat shields produce so much drag for the lift they provide, it's really not feasible. Or is it? By placing nose cones on the top and bottom of the heat shield, we can essentially remove the drag from the heat shield entirely. I mean, so far this makes sense. If you put a heat shield in a stack, it shouldn't produce much drag anyway since it's shielded on both sides. However, when you do this, it doesn't remove the lift from the heat shield. We now have a wing that has very little drag and a ton of lift. If we fly it, we can see its lift to drag ratio is simply ridiculous. For reference, a stock wing has a lift to drag ratio of maybe 20 to 30 at low speed and maybe a lift to drag ratio of 5 at higher speeds. This new heat shield wing is exceeding a lift to drag of 40 at lower speeds and actually gets better the faster we go. As you can see here, it's producing 80 kilonewtons of lift for 0.21 kilonewtons of drag, which is a lift to drag ratio of around 400. We can even make this wing better by offsetting the nose cones into a fairing or cargo bay. If we do this, we remove the drag of the nose cones while keeping the low drag of the heat shield. And since it's also a heat shield, it will protect us from overheating as well. With a wing this crazily efficient, we can pull off some simply ridiculous feats. So to showcase this new tech, I built this thing here. Let's fire it up and I'll explain as we go. While these new wings have a great lift to drag ratio, they're not so good at low speeds. To fix this, I added these propellers to the top so it can ascend to a high altitude, and then we can drop it to get the speed we need to fly. Once at 7 kilometers, we will shut off the props and just let it fall. I know this kind of looks like a collision course, but as we fall and gain speed, those heat shields start to pick up a lot of lift, which is enough to pull us right out of the dive and shoot us upward. At this point, I actually need to start rolling to prevent it from climbing too steeply. After recovering, it's time for our next trick. This odd ring of heat shields here is actually a propeller, driven by two of the large braking ground motors. As it turns out, the insane lift to drag ratio not only makes these heat shields great wings, it also makes them amazing propeller blades. You'll see that as the flight progresses. That said, initially it doesn't look too good. The thrust from this propeller is actually quite low. The angle of the heat shields is really high compared to its prograde velocity vector, and so most of the lift is pointing outward with just a small prograde component. That said, this forward thrust, while minute, is still enough to keep pushing us forward. The incredible lift to drag ratio of the heat shield wings means that we barely lose any velocity to drag, and as a result we can accumulate this minor force into some serious velocity. It's just gonna take a while. Let's speed this up. At this point, we have surpassed 1080 meters per second, which was the previous speed record for propellers in KSP set by Bradley Wistons. 
I want to take this opportunity to talk about this tech and how it should be considered in the design space of KSP crafts. First and foremost, this tech makes pretty much everything that uses wings, such as SSTO space planes, much better. With this, you can achieve much better margins since you can now use low thrust, high efficiency engines like the ion engines. This also means that pretty much every space plane built without this tech is now obsolete. So that raises a question. How should we compare missions that use this tech versus those that don't? Personally, I think this tech is transformative enough that it deserves its own category, separate from those that use the normal lifting surfaces. Sure, I can claim that I've beaten Brad's propeller speed record, but it doesn't feel fair to make that claim since I'm using vastly superior lifting surfaces created by a bug in the game. To me, these heat shield wings are in a similar vein as Kraken Drives. They are fun to play with, but they also trivialize most of the game, and so I'd discourage their widespread use. To me, it would be a shame if all KSP crafts looked like this in the end. But what do you think? How do you think this tech should be used in the future? Should it be seen as a curious bug in the game, or a permanent replacement for the traditional lifting surfaces moving forward? I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Speaking of trivialize, this propeller has now reached a completely ridiculous velocity. After lapping Kerbin a few times, we have ascended all the way up to 57 kilometers and now have a speed of 2,115.6 meters per second. We aren't getting any more thrust at this altitude, so it's time to fire up the ion engine inside to get the rest of the way to orbit. And there we have it! We have achieved an orbit with a purely electric charge ion powered craft. And we got most of that way with just propeller power. I did not pack enough ion fuel to get anywhere, so we're just gonna head straight home. That said, you can imagine that if I had included some more fuel, we could go to Eve or Jewel using this tech and come home without refueling. And yes, if you're curious, I've also tested it on both Eve and Jewel. It is capable of accelerating almost all the way up to orbital velocity on both of those planets as well. But that's gonna be for another time. For now, let's just get this thing home. looks like we are significantly overshooting the KSC. For any normal space plane, this would be annoying to come back from. However, not so for this craft. We can simply dive into the lower atmosphere and then pull a 180 using the insane lift from these heat shields. And since the lift to drag ratio is so good, we can even keep most of our velocity through the turn and get back on course really quickly. And just look at those g-forces! The lift from the heat shields is so high the entire craft is flexing. From here, it's a quick jaunt back to the KSC. We actually need to open up the cargo bay to slow down some more here or else we'd be coming in too fast. For fun, as we uh, approach the KSC, I decided to do a few victory laps around the KSC at Mach 3. If you didn't think the tech was bonkers already, this should probably help convince you. We're pulling a consistent 20 Gs and barely losing any speed in the process. That said, over time we're going to slow down a little bit, and once we've slowed down enough, we can just pull up and then fire the propellers, and then gently hover back to the KSC.
And there you have it. While I said earlier that this tech is comparable to Kraken Drives, that doesn't mean it's not fun to play with. I'm planning to do some even crazier missions in the future with this tech to see just how far you can push it. So look out for that. Alright, thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.